Barack Obama's long-form birth certificate has been almost universally deemed a forgery. Long before Arizona Sheriff Joe Arpaio's forensic examination found it to be created digitally and never having existed in paper form. My investiga investigators believe that the long-form birth certificate was manufactured electronically and that it did not originate in a paper format as claimed by the uh, White House. Without even a digital examination, it is obvious it is a cut and paste job with at least eight different typewriter fonts. Are we to believe Obama's birth certificate was typed up on eight different typewriters? Highly unlikely. Further, the digital PDF shows multiple layers, bitmap versus grayscale, misspelling on the registrar's stamp, just to name three of the dozen or so anomalies. Barack Obama, having no documents to prove he is a natural-born citizen, as required by the U.S. Constitution, must be deemed ineligible to hold the office of the President of the United States. Even if Obama is who he says he is, Given that his father, Barack Obama Sr., was a Kenyan citizen, technically a subject of the British Empire, a fact admitted by Obama, this should have precluded him from even running for president. There have been literally dozens of lawsuits charging that Obama is not a natural-born citizen, all dismissed for ludicrous reasons. The court's dismissals fall into two general categories. Number one, that the claimants don't have standing, that they were not materially harmed by Obama not being a natural born citizen. That is, that they did not run against Obama as a candidate for president. This is ludicrous given that all citizens, not just presidential candidates, are harmed if Obama is ineligible to be president and is elected. And number two, the lawsuits demand for the Secretary of State or other government official to examine all presidential candidate citizenship documents has no legal basis. In the most recent dismissed lawsuit, Virgil H. Good, running on the Constitution Party ticket, sued the state of Alabama to compel Alabama's Secretary of State to examine Obama's paper birth certificate prior to the 2012 election. Good cited Alabama Code, which states, quote, when presidential electors are to be chosen, the Secretary of State of Alabama shall certify the names of all candidates for president and vice president who are nominated by any national convention. While the Alabama Supreme Court found that Virgil Good had standing, being a presidential candidate, they concluded that the Alabama Secretary of State had no legal authority or legal apparatus to forensically examine Obama's birth certificate. That the Democratic National Convention, the DNC, that nominated Obama should be the body that should have determined if Obama was a natural born citizen. This, however, has major problems. In 2008, the DNC nomination document, a legal document, stated that Obama and Biden were, quote, legally qualified to serve as president and vice president of the United States, unquote. Astoundingly, this phrase is omitted in the 2012 nomination, only stating that Obama and Biden are certified that they are nominated as candidates. Obviously, the DNC is protecting themselves from having to defend Obama being a natural born citizen, knowing full well he is not. It is time the American people rise up and demand that we dispense with the DNC's tricks and corrupt judges dismissing valid lawsuits against Obama's eligibility. It is time the American people call for a special prosecutor to determine if Obama is in fact a natural born citizen as required by the Constitution. Obama can do one of two things. He can submit his paper birth certificate to forensic examination, if one exists, or provide a DNA sample to determine if in fact he is a son of Stanley Ann Dunham and Barack Obama Sr. The latter solution may in fact already have been carried out. 
as has been in the news recently, intelligence expert and author of the just-published mammoth 700-page book, Spy Hunter, Michael Shrimpton states that the CIA took a DNA sample of Obama prior to the 2008 election and found that the woman Obama now states is his mother, Stanley Ann Dunham, is in fact not related to Obama. It's also nice to have a DNA relationship with your parents. And, and the DNA test that was done uh, in respect of Barack Obama's claimed grandparents, uh, I, sh I understand the CIA were unable to obtain a match. Um, the CIA did it very well. I believe they did it at a fundraising dinner. And it's absolutely marvellous. You want to do a DNA test. Nothing better than a glass of water. Because what you get with a glass of water, you get saliva for your DNA, and you've got fingerprints as well. It's an all-in-one, do-it-yourself, DIY DNA testing kit. And all the CIA did was slip in. You don't have to ask somebody to do a DNA test. They just took away a couple of glasses. Bag, bag one for grandpa, bag one for grandpa, do a DNA test, no link, end of case. Is it time for a special prosecutor to be appointed and demand Obama submit a second DNA sample? In August of 1998, President Bill Clinton was compelled by special prosecutor Ken Starr to give a DNA sample to determine if the semen on Monica Lewinsky's dress was his. So demanding a sitting president submit a DNA sample is not without precedent. We don't know who Barack Obama's mother is. Like Barack Obama Sr., his mother also may have been a foreign citizen, making Obama absolutely not eligible to be president. Regardless, if Obama has in fact lied to the American people about his parents, has forged his birth certificate, all the laws he has signed, all the wars he has waged, all the innocent men, women, and children he has murdered with drones, including at least three American citizens, have been done without a legal basis, committing treason in the strictest sense of the word. If this is true, he should be imprisoned, not impeached, because his presidency is invalid and every single law that he has signed should be immediately voided, beginning with Obamacare.